All right, everybody, 10 Tampa Bay Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins here. Uh, well, now it's in the afternoon on our Tuesday, uh, just before 3 o'clock, and we are watching Tropical Storm Helene. It was named a tropical storm as of 11 o'clock this morning. So let's go over that. We'll start with the satellite. You can see a pretty good view of it here. Uh, it's getting better organized. Let's, let's put it that way. It is getting better organized. Uh, recon's been out there. The low-level center is still exposed, though. And you can see, I mean, look right there. You can see that pretty clearly that it doesn't have a lot of thunderstorms over top of it. However, it's still got all this convection out to the right. It's getting more out to the west on the left side now. And there's a little bit more convection near the center here. So this thing is kind of on its way, if you will, of getting a little bit stronger. And that, that is the forecast, right? That's what we expect. So here we go with the recon. You can see that has been in there. A couple of different planes first thing this morning. They are now out of there. Uh, they are providing... Unvalu invaluable data uh, to the forecast models and to what's actually going on right now. But more than anything else, that goes in those forecast models, and hopefully they continue to do a good job. So here's the forecast now. So by tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., we're looking at a hurricane, right? Wednesday, 6 a.m., 75-mile-per-hour winds. This is moving a little bit more to the west, and so that puts it really close to Cozumel uh, tomorrow morning as it's strengthening. So they're going to get a little bit of weather from it. Nothing terrible, but they will. Uh, and then here's the deal. I mean, look at Wednesday morning, it starts with 75 mile per hour winds. Wednesday evening, six o'clock, it has 90 mile per hour winds. Then by Wednesday night into Thursday morning, it strengthens through Cat 2 up to Cat 3 with 115 mile per hour winds. And then you can see about the same at landfall, which would be just after sunset on Thursday evening up towards the Big Bend area, up towards Perry. Maybe a little to the left of that. We don't, we don't know just exactly yet, right? But that's the forecast. That has not changed much in the last 12 to 18 hours or so. And that includes this little curve back towards the uh, northwest. There's actually, instead of a trough coming down to pick it up and take it out to sea, there's a trough coming down and leaving a little piece behind over Arkansas and Louisiana. And that's going to have this rotate around it, what's called like a Fujiwara effect, where two lows just kind of really go right around each other. That'll be uh, what this will end up doing. Now, let's take a look at the, the forecast models. And you can see they're starting to trend a little bit more in this area here. We had several over here this morning. They're starting to drop off, and we're looking more up towards Tallahassee. Uh, I don't think as far west as Panama City, but, you know, maybe a little bit to the left of Perry, to the west of Perry, and that would be closer to Tallahassee. And then you can see it doing its little loop-de-loop -loop thing up here. That will be a rainmaker and a chance for some severe weather. Uh, for parts of the Midwest. Now, here we go with the watches and warnings. We've had the tropical storm warnings for Mexico, Cancun, Cozumel, parts of Cuba. They also have a hurricane watch. Probably is going to get a tropical storm weather. That'll be tomorrow morning. The Keys now have a tropical storm warning for Key West. Okay, and that means we expect winds at about 40 miles per hour in Key West. Kind of easy to do. It'll be out of the south and southeast. It's easy to do because the pressures are lowering. And it's just an island out in the middle of the water, and the wind's just blowing across the water, right? Now, for the Tampa Bay area, all of our coastal counties, Manatee, Sarasota, Pinellas, Hillsboro, Pasco, Hernando, Citrus, a hurricane watch, which means we could see winds in excess of 74 miles per hour. I don't think most of us will. Some of us along the immediate coast could see gusts that high. Notice the inland counties, inland Hillsboro, inland Manatee, and Sarasota, Polk, Hardy, DeSoto, all have a tropical storm warning. We don't expect as much wind inland. Uh, it's more going to be right along the immediate coast. Now, let's look at the surge. And I think more than anything else, guys, this storm will be remembered for the amount of surge if this pans out. Three to five foot for Fort Myers. Aren't they happy to see that number compared to Ian, right? Look at this for Tampa. We have not seen five to eight foot storm surge here in a long time. I've been here 16 years. I don't remember Actually, those numbers coming to fruition, let's put it that way, right? We may not get that much, probably close to four to five, but we'll see. Right now, the Hurricane Center forecast says five to eight. Pinellas, inside the bay, Oldsmar, uh, those areas in downtown Tampa, Davis Islands, uh, those areas, five to eight foot of surge. And then look what happens when you get up into Pasco, Hernando, and Citrus. That number goes up six to ten. And then 10 to 15, I mean, we're pretty closer to 10 or 11-foot storm surge possible for the Crystal River area up in Citrus County. Remember, the center is going to be a little bit closer. It'll be out here somewhere, but it'll be a little further offshore uh, when you get down towards Tampa. But 
the wind is just blowing. I mean, it's literally blowing like this, and it just blows it right up against the coast. It's perfectly shaped. And the other reason for Tampa is it's blowing it up into the bay, and it kind of traps it. So those are some high numbers uh, that we haven't seen a lot of here in, in, like I said, the last 15 to 20 years. Okay, so hopefully they're on the high side and it doesn't pan out. Obviously, 10 to 15 foot for the areas that see the most. Now, let's talk about the winds. This is when the winds will arrive. This yellow area you see here is tropical storm force winds, so about 40 mile per hour winds. Pretty much sustained. That's the forecast. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't see that happen a whole lot. Like, yes, it would say that by 6 a.m., Manatee, Sarasota County, we have steady winds at 40 miles per hour. I don't think that's the case. I think they'll be in the 20s and 30s, but gusting certainly in the 40s. Uh, and then by 9, 10 o'clock, that's in the Tampa area, right? Look where the highest winds are. Hurricane in the dark red. The orange is 58 mile per hour. That would be enough to give you a severe thunderstorm morning in the winter time, in the summertime, anytime, right? High, those type of high winds. Look where they are. They're offshore. Now, that's steady winds, but that means we could see winds in the 40s and 50s along our beaches here and gusts in the 60s and 70s. And then as we get into, and let me back up. In fact, that was, take you back in time here a little bit so you get an idea. Uh, this is 6 a.m. Thursday morning, 2 p.m. Thursday afternoon. The highest wind's starting to come here. But the other thing about 2 p.m. at Thursday afternoon is the wind direction. Initially, the winds are blowing like this, right? By this time, they're going to start blowing like that. That's when the water comes up. So 2 p.m., on Thursday is when we start with the surge. Might be a little bit sooner, but you're really going to start noticing it by 2 or 3 o'clock uh, on Thursday afternoon. Now, as we go through Thursday at 5 p.m., we still have winds blowing on shore here, okay? So we'll still have surge. In fact, I think the surge peaks from about 3 p.m. through about 7 or 8 p.m. and then slowly comes down through the evening hours on Thursday. You can see now this is 8 p.m. The highest winds are moving away. They're making landfall somewhere up here. There will be hurricane force winds in here. It's not showing it. But uh, the 55, 60 mile per hour winds will be up in the Big Bend, and everybody's winds are coming down. Overnight, this is 11 p.m. on Thursday, the winds are starting to really drop down for the Tampa area, and things are clearing out just a little bit. Arrival of tropical storm force winds, probably, as I mentioned, around 8 or 9 o'clock, probably 9 o'clock a.m. on Thursday. So all the preps you're going to do, you really want to have most of them done by Wednesday night sunset, 7.30 or so. But you still got time, and there'll be some rain bands around Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. We will have a small tornado threat in those. And then Thursday, we'll, we'll, we'll see a lot of it move by, but uh, the winds will start to pick up. And so it's, you know, it's tough to be doing kind of putting things up and around your house when the wind's starting to pick up. So you want to get that done uh, sooner than later. All right, let's talk about what you need to know. Right now, we're thinking Wednesday night through Friday is Friday morning early. Okay, schools are out Wednesday and Thursday for Hillsboro. I'm telling you, they'll probably be out Friday as well because the, we're, we can't get people out of the shelters Thursday night. The wind's just starting to come down. Uh, that's probably going to take through the day on Friday for that to happen, and they need those shelters for the schools. The schools are the shelters, and so that's why that's happening. Storm surge, five to eight foot in the Tampa area. Uh, flooding, two to four inches of rainfall. Some areas will get more than that. We'll get some heavy downpours, and it'll add up very quickly. But I think overall... This is not a Debbie situation, although it's similar with the track. But some of the forecast models suggesting that the rainfall is more tighter, closer to the center, because it's a strengthening system, which would keep a little bit more of the rain offshore. So two to four is probably on the lower side, but there'll be some spots that get close to six, I think. Um, damaging winds, 45 to 55 mile per hour winds, but we'll see some gusts in the 60s to near 70 miles per hour. Let's go some timing just real fast here. I want to show you Wednesday afternoon at 7 p.m. See the rain bands offshore? That's around 10 p.m., and this will change a little bit, but late afternoon Wednesday into Wednesday evening, rain bands come through. Look at the center's way to our southwest at that point. This is Thursday morning at sunrise, right? And there it is. Just before sunrise, we have some rain in the air, but not a lot. Look at the center way down there west of Key West. Then Thursday evening, 6 p.m., it's due west of Florida, of Tampa, Florida, excuse me. And then you can see we're starting to look at some more rain bands. Some of these will swing through, but you see these bands here? They will train over the same area, and some of those areas will get four, five, six inches, right? Just depends on how it shows up. Uh, and there will be a small tornado threat, especially north and east of the center. But if this happens, most of the high winds stay offshore right around that center. And then you can see landfall right around 9, 30, 10 p.m. or so uh, as we get into Thursday night up in the Big Bend. Now let's talk about winds. 
This is what they look like on our forecast model. You can see in the 20s early on Thursday morning, 20s and 30s by Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock. That time, the wind is starting to blow on shore, and it'll be blowing on shore even higher than that. I think well into the 30s and 40s on shore Thursday evening, and that's why we have that storm surge peaking 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock on, on Thursday evening. And then you can see by Friday at noon, uh, we're back to some breezy conditions. Okay, that's it, guys. Of course, I will keep you updated here. Don't forget to continue to follow us on 10 Tampa Bay. We'll be on air at 5 o'clock tonight. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my page here and all to our 10 Tampa Bay pages as well. Have a good one.